Okay, we've got an iPad mini that is missing FL7500 and C7523. Um, it's pretty common from prying the battery connector off from this side uh, rather than the battery side. Um, so pretty simple fix, you just replace them. Uh, when this happens, the problem you see is that the iPad will not report the uh, charge correctly, the battery percentage won't report correctly, or it will just boot loop, or it'll work fine for a while and then it'll turn off and turn back on. Um, and basically what's happening is uh, the battery is unable to communicate with the board correctly about you know its charge percentage um, or temperature. I think it's charge percentage. I can't remember which one this line has on it. So we'll go ahead and tin these pads. Now I have a bunch of new FL7500 at home, but I forgot to bring any. Uh, so what we're going to do is pull the components we need off of an iPhone 5 board. Um, now I just so happen to know that the LCD filters, the backlight filters for the iPhone 5 are the exact same measurements as FL7500. So that makes it pretty easy. We just pull one of these off and stick it on the iPad. Um, and that's actually all it really needs. Um, I, I believe that you can leave the capacitor off and um, it'll work, but I'm going to go ahead and replace the capacitor too. Um, which I found one down in the baseband area of the iPhone 5 board that is an exact match. So I'll go ahead and replace both components. That guy right there. need both of them. Just you. Ah. Uh, uh, now I don't remember which one is which. <laughs> All right. Find another one. Yes, they are identical, so I can just take either one of them, doesn't matter.
<laughs> Ugh, making a mess of it. Should have done the big one first anyways. So this particular one was boot looping rather than booting up correctly. So we'll see if it's still doing that. Turn that air off so I don't burn my arm again. like this is going to have to charge a little bit before I can test it. And an hour later It is charging just fine, booting up just fine. So when it came in, it was just boot looping. And the reason it does this is because the battery is not correctly reporting its charge level to the logic board. So the logic board just assumes that it's charged enough to turn it on. So the iPad tries to turn on, shows the Apple logo, and then obviously there's not enough power to boot up, and it shuts back off and just repeats until you replace that filter and the battery can actually tell the iPad, hey, I don't have enough charge, just let me charge for a little while before you try to boot. So uh, 